everyone. Well, it's really such an honor to be here today, especially with such an amazing um, group of speakers, especially Maharashi, for someone so young to be spreading such wisdom at that age. It's really very inspiring. Um, so before we begin, I actually want to start off with a question. How many of you in the audience feel like you have an idea that can truly benefit society? Okay. How many of you have shared this idea with others? <laughs> All right, so for those that didn't raise their hand the second time, I hope after this talk that might change. So we're here to tell you about an idea that we shared, one that we believed was truly needed in society, one that we thought would really benefit the people around us, would feed our own desire for connection and change the way people interact with each other. We're here to tell you about how we sought to make deep conversations the norm. Okay, so it was just another night out in Abu Dhabi with our friends. Um, but something felt off. It wasn't the people. We had known them for a very long time. It wasn't the place. We were struggling to feel connected. We weren't feeling engaged at all. Were our friendships really based upon which celebrity is making the headline this week? or where we're going out next weekend, or who we're crushing on. The same conversations, just another day. So we thought, were we this whole time settling for conversations so insignificant? So small talk is everywhere, and we can't escape it. So we wanted to end it. First, we joked about starting a campaign to end small talk, running around the streets of Abu Dhabi yelling, and small talk. But, you know, that joke ended just as quickly as it started. We thought we had to be more tactical in our approach. And we asked the questions. We're like, was it that we're losing our own sense of connection because of the overwhelming digital presence? Or are we just afraid to feel vulnerable? So we, we thought, okay, we had an idea. We have resources available to us. We had a space to use. We had the questions to ask. We thought there wouldn't be any harm in trying it out. So we did. So how does it work? We started off with setting up a Facebook event page, inviting the public to come and have better conversations with strangers. Um, we compiled and researched over 200 conversation starters and hung them around the room. Then uh, people were invited to come in, and instead of their name tag, they would write a description of themselves in one hashtag instead. This was usually the hardest part for people, a self-realization ex like experiment in itself. Um, and then they choose a topic that interests them from the ones that are hung around. And they start forming mini groups where everyone starts having deep and meaningful conversation uh, throughout the venue. We offered basically a safe space where there's no judgment, no labels, doesn't matter where you're from, what you do, but you all have one thing that you can share, good conversation about topics such as human psychology, um, philosophy. Um, we stay away from religion and politics, though. <laughs> um, and basically, passion, happiness, love, everything that connects us. Um, so at the end, we conclude it with a group discussion uh, guided by a moderator, and uh, basically to sum it up, and small talk is a space where strangers come together and connect on a deeper level from all walks of life. So in order to gain a better understanding of what our community thought, we actually posed a survey, and the results were very interesting. Um, as you can see, a lot of these answers here um, our, well, actually, we asked the, one of the questions that we asked was, what have you gained as a result of attending an end small talk session? And as you can see from the answers, um, you know, feel more inspired about life. I'm more open to new ideas. I learn more about myself. All these are tenets of growth that relate to our own development as human beings on this journey through life. Um, in particular, 44% of the people who answered said that they were more accepting of others and more accepting 
of ideas or beliefs they don't agree with, which I think is actually how we brew more peaceful and tolerant societies. And as we move forward into a more diverse type of global economy or a global uh, community, these values are going to be inherent or important for us to take with us. Um, and to make it all worthwhile, after each event, I mean, we knew we had a yearning for deep and meaningful conversations. And after each event, we still get people coming up to us, telling us that fa they feel more refreshed, more accomplished, more fulfilled just by having these types of interactions with others. Um, even, I think what makes it the most rewarding for us is also to be able to see people from literally all walks of life, all nationalities, ages, backgrounds, you know, extroverts, introverts, all coming together and sharing their relative humanity. So putting aside all those labels, all those misconceptions of what, what people think they are and just coming together in one space and uniting, basically. So for the students out there, it's important to note that this realization that deep conversations are so valuable came later in life. It was after we kind of stopped learning at school or university where we were kind of trying to find a way to add meaning to our everyday encounters. These types of conversations, they're, they're valuable because you learn more about yourself, your ideas, and your beliefs. Society teaches us to be superficial, and sometimes our conversations are just extensions of that. Um, so there's a fear that's built around engaging in deeper conversations, uh, a fear to get out of your comfort zone or to think differently than you usually do. So don't settle, you know, don't follow the norm. You can change the status quo. Um, and basically you can set the standard for interactions you have with each other. Um, so have conversations that matter to you. Stay curious about life around you. Challenge the stigmas and remember that you all have the power to bring ideas into life. Okay. So this is probably the most important question as it relates to the current theme of this event, but also to what we try to do at every end small talk, ask the questions that matter. At a time of great uncertainty, where no one can tell you what the future looks like, where you're constantly being bombarded by expectations of who or what you should be, where you just don't know what to believe in or who to believe in anymore, what's your next move? Where do you go from here? Well. Do you actually move in, in fear? Do you move with the masses? Or do you move in faith? Faith that maybe together we can create a future that envelops the highest values we hold true as human beings, those of compassion, of love, of genuinity, where we can create communities that thrive on loving and, and thrive on love and having deep soul connections with each other. Um, so if there's... So this is the choice that you have to make, and no one's going to make that choice for you. So if you were to leave you with one last point, it's to urge you to move toward in love with the, towards the ideas that you hold true and that will bring out the best in yourself and bring out the best in society. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about the video. <laughs> yeah. yeah.